Hey guys, I want to do my testimony video. I've been wanting to do this for a while. The Lord laid it on my heart months ago and I just haven't done it. And he's not letting go, so I figured I better get to it. Um, a little quick introduction about myself. I grew up in a little small town and I am married. I have four wonderful children and my name's Michelle. I'm married to Merle. Some of you guys know him because he does a lot of videos. His channel's Living in Grace. And I wanted to just talk about my situation and growing up. And I pray and I hope that it helps somebody. Um, oh, and we have a little granddaughter, too, that's precious. I mean, she is just... A blessing, a gift from God, and all children are, but she is really special to us, and she's such a blessing that the Lord has blessed us with. Um, when I was young, when I was first born, mom and dad worked, okay? They both worked full-time jobs. I, basically, my grandmother started keeping me when I was a baby, and I kind of just stayed with her. Uh, she was a wonderful lady, very country. Um, she did not go to an institutional church, but she read her Bible every day. She believed in the Lord, and she taught me about the Lord when I was little. So did my granddad. My granddad was... Um, a Christian. He believed in the Lord. He also read his Bible every day. My granddad was blind. In one of his eyes, he could still see certain things, um, but he was a drunk uh, most of his young adult life, and he was in a car accident that left him blinded. Um, I learned a lot from my granddad in his later years about the Lord. Um, you know, sometimes the Lord uses events such as that to set us down and say, look, you know, you are going to have to do what I tell you to or else, you know, we're going to, you know, take you on out of here. And then he shows you just how, how he can do that because he's mighty. And... My grandmother, though, would always let me go to church if I wanted to. Typically, I started out, I would always go to vacation Bible schools in the summertime, and I loved it. There were several churches in that community that um, had vacation Bible school in the summer, and I went to a couple usually different ones. Um, I had told Miss Wendy in one of her hangouts, I thought I was 10 years old when I was saved, but when I went back and looked at the dates, I remember the event very clearly, but the date I wasn't sure of. I was actually 10, or I was actually 11, going on 12. So, um, I was pretty young. Um, but yeah, like I said, I just, grandmother, she kept me, and I stayed with her for, until I was 12, um, and then my mom and dad wanted me to come home. Um, and, well, we'll talk about all that. I mean, I'm getting a little bit ahead, ahead of myself. But I would go to the Bible schools. And Miss Early was the very first teacher in Bible school that I remember talking about Jesus and starting to understand what she was talking about. Uh, I was probably 10, uh, 9 and 10, uh, but, but I was really starting to understand what she was talking about. I was um, understanding, you know, the things that she was saying. I was reading my Bible a lot more. By that time, I was, you know, able to read words and, you know, read more for myself. Um, then my grandmother's next-door neighbor, Miss Debbie, started taking me to church with her every Sunday and Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, she'd go to church and she'd take me with her. Um, I also went to that church's Bible school, 
and that's when I was saved. We had Bible school, and the preacher was talking about Jesus and how he came down from heaven and gave his life to save me, to save us all. And for the first time, it was like, how did God, this mighty God, send his son down to save a sinner like me? You know, and I understood and believed what they were saying about this wonderful Jesus and what he did for us. And at that point, I believed. So, you know, I kept going to church with Miss Debbie. I mean, she she's a blessing in my life. And um, I still talk to her sometimes. I see her out. And she'll just never know, you know, what a blessing she was in my life by taking me and helping me learn about Jesus. Grandma and Grandpa read their Bibles and things all the time, talked about Jesus. So I, I knew, you know, I had an idea of who Jesus was and what he did. I had little Bible story books and things like that all through my childhood. So I was saved. Um, and then I was saved in February 1980, February 2nd, 1980. I got baptized that following June. Okay, if you know anything about the mountains, uh, if the church don't have a baptismal, a lot of times they'll wait until the summertime to take you to the river and baptize you. Um, and that's exactly what they did. But let me tell you, that water was still freezing cold. Um, I was baptized at Carson's Chapel in June of 1980. My granddad bought me a little Bible um, that same year for my birthday, and I still have it. And I have all these dates wrote down in it, and it's so precious to me because he knew that I needed God's Word that that's what he knew um and that was he let me carry his bible to church for a long time here i was this little big girl carrying this big old black bible to church and he felt the need for me to have god's word and to me that is a precious precious gift um then i turned 12 that summer mom and dad started wanting me to come home i was turning, you know, getting ready to turn 13, and um, they wanted me home. So uh, I went. I resented that for a while because I was perfectly happy at Grandma's house. Um, Grandma and Grandpa were good to me, and, you know, I, I wanted to stay, but I, I couldn't. I had to go home. Um and I can understand mom and dad now that I'm older, you know, wanting their family back together because there was four of us kids as well, and we were kind of scattered. You know, one grandma watched one, one watched another, an aunt watched one, you know, so so we were kind of scattered, scattered out. My youngest sister hadn't come along yet. She uh, came about that time, like in 1977, so... Um, and after she was born, Daddy just wanted his family together. So that's the way that worked out. Um, so during this time, um, I, I was starting to turn into a teenager, getting ready to go in junior high school. When I moved in with Mom and Dad, um, they were not churchgoers. I quit going with Miss Debbie. She came and got me for a while, and I stopped wanting to go um, and started being the typical 13-year-old girl, teenager, getting wild as a buck. Um, most of my friends were wild, so I was just right in there. Um, and... Kept that concept going on for a while. Gave mom and dad a really hard time. Like I said, I resented a little bit them making me leave grandma's. 
and putting a lot of, I was the oldest, so I had a lot of responsibility with my younger brothers and sisters, and I did there for a little while, you know, resent that, because, you know, I had it made at Grandma's, so um, that was one of the things that was going on, too, um, and eventually, Dad started going to church, and he was saved. And we were just all so rebell rebellious and against church and going and grumbled and griped. And um, he went there for about a year and stopped going. So I, I just, I wasn't around Christians. And now I realize the importance of being around other Christians. Uh, it helps you stay focused and helps you... Um, stay in the Word and study. Um, and we need that. You know, we're human beings and we need others to fellowship with. Um, so, that was that was the issue. I was just looking through my notes. I made me a little timeline here. Um, so, I went on you know, went through my teenage years, uh, met my first husband. Now, I have been married twice. Uh, he and I were married in 1986. And I was pregnant with my first son. Um, while I, I said I was a wild teenager, and, and I was. Um, if any people know anything about just old redneck country girls, that's what I was. And proud of it at the time, so... But I wouldn't take anything from my oldest son. He's a blessing. Went on to have another son in my first marriage. And both children are just wonderful. I love them. Um, I pray that they come close to Christ. Uh, I ask that you guys pray that too. When they were little, um, me and my husband stayed together for six years. And then we... We separated and later divorced. And I know it was hard on my kids. And I went wild for a period of time there, too. Uh, worked all the time. Thought that I just had to work all the time to take care of those boys. When all reality, I should have been spending more time with them. That's the one thing that I really, truly regret. That I didn't spend as much time with them growing up as I should have. <clears throat> and I'm not telling you not to work. I know people have to work. But the Lord was providing, even as rebellious as I had been, and all the bad things that I had done, He still provided a good home and a good place for me and my boys. We never were hungry. We never wanted for anything. I mean, there was there was hard times sometimes, but, you know, we, we all face those things. It's how we deal with those times and what we do. You know, you're going through a rough time, you need to go to the Lord in prayer. Now, at that time, I didn't. I, you know, it's like, well, I need to fix this myself. You know, so my walk was not close with God during my teenage years and my young adult life. I, I just wasn't. Um, after the boys got about uh, eight, seven and eight, nine, during those years, I started trying to take them back to church. And I felt the need to go and be around other Christians even at that time, and I just, I tried, and I tried, I worked third shift, um, you know, like I said, six and seven days a week, churches around here, even to this day, we live in western North Carolina, and they call this the Bible Belt of North Carolina, and this is a repent of your sins, you got to be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and any other day of the week that you need to be there. 
and you got to dress the part, you got to look the part, you got to act the part, and I couldn't do it. I could not do it. You know, you got to think in the back of my mind, mom and dad taught me work, 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 you know, and so I couldn't let that go, but I wanted to be close to God. I just couldn't do it all. Then the repent of your sins thing come into place and the elect thing come into place, into play at some of these churches and things that I was going to. Well, God only elects certain people. Well, if he's elected people, then I've been too bad. He ain't never going to be electing me. I know he wouldn't have chose me because I was too awful. So I gave up. I stopped going. Repent of your sins. Repent of your sins. You know, I tried to do the stuff that the church said I needed to do. The preacher was telling me to do these things. Now, keep in mind, during this time, I wasn't really, you know, I'd study my Sunday school lesson, listen to the preacher. I wasn't reading my Bible like I should. Um, so, I only knew what they were saying. Okay, so, yeah, that was a pretty hard time uh, in my life. When I look back now, the Lord blessed me through being divorced for about 10 years, 10 or 12 years. And there was two times that I was at death's door, not from sickness, just from people that I had put myself around. Um, I, I see now God watching over me and being there for me, even when I was rebellious. And that's why don't ever think that you are not good enough or you have done too much to be able to put yourself back in God's grace. Because too many times people look down on others and say the wrong things and hurt them and make them feel like they're just so worthless that they that they can't and that just burns me up because you're never never once you've believed in christ you're never too far gone to come back that's what he wants you to do he wants you to be close to him he wants you to learn about him he wants you to tell others about him so so don't think that you've ever been so bad that you can't come back to Christ. Um, I, I just want to make that so clear because, I mean, those 10 years in my life were crazy. I was wild as all get out. And, you know, I went to church through some of that time and it's like that made it worse it made me feel worse because you go to these churches that repent of your sins turn or burn you know you got to live this way you've got to do this you've got to do that and i mean i'd leave feeling like a dog worthless and i'm thinking there's no way that that i can do this i'm not good enough so don't let that affect you. Um, my grandmother never went to church. She just did not care to. She, for whatever reason, I mean, she had a rough life as a young woman. You know, like I said before, my granddad, he drank. Um, he was wild. He ran around with women. And she stayed humble. And close to God and she stayed with him until he died I don't know how I, I only God you know she took care of him and 
only a humble person and knowing what God's grace is about could have done that. So, you know, that it was a big example in my life. And, you know, she had to humble herself to be able to take care with take care of a man that was mean to her and run around on her, you know. Um, to me, that's just extraordinary that she stayed and did the things that she did once he got really sick. Um, so there you have that. Then in 2004, I met Merle. You know, I was coming out of this. I'd stopped being so wild and crazy, but I still wasn't going to church, wasn't reading my Bible, um, doing the things that the Lord was wanting me to do. You know, and I, how we got together, I don't know. Um, it was, you know, I never, I'd give up on having a relationship with anybody. That was just not even in my head. And I met him out of the blue. One, one day he asked me to go to the movies with him and his kids. And I was like, okay, you know, now my boys, my youngest son was getting up to 18 at this time, you know, so, um, and here he had two younger children and I didn't, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen. I was like, okay, I'll go. And we got along so well. It was like we were meant to be together. Um, when you bring two families together like that, sometimes there's challenges, and and there were, there were challenges. Um, you know, Merle Jengison really missed his mom, and didn't want no part of his stepmom. Um, his daughter, on the other hand, she was wanting a mom, and she's like, "Be my mom," you know, <laughs> and we we just. We got along, and, and to this day, it's just like we've always been together. Um, so, you know, we still, we believed in Jesus. We both were Christians, and we still didn't go to church. Because, see, here in, in the South, if you believe in Jesus and you're a Christian, you better get in church. See, that, that's the mindset. that, And I'm not saying don't go to church. If you feel like you're in a church that's doing exactly what the Lord wants you to do, then you go and you fellowship with other Christians. Um, I have an issue with living in Western North Carolina in the Bible Belt. Like I was saying earlier, there's a church every mile. Every mile. Nobody visits anymore goes out and tries to get people to come to church. Nobody tells them about Jesus. Um, in the last probably five years, I've seen Jehovah's Witness have showed up. Merle took care of that. They don't really come back anymore. Um, and I'm not saying that in a mean way, but he, you know, started telling them about Jesus. And they, the one lady that time asked him if he was a preacher, and he's like, you know, no, but, you know, so, um, and we, you know, we started, we tried to go, it just, it never felt, felt right, I, I don't know, for whatever reason, I think the Lord had a plan for us, um, I think he put us together with a plan, and he couldn't get us to see it, although he kept showing us. So, in 2012, that was the worst year in our entire life. Uh, the first of the year, we had problems, and we worked through them. Then at the end of the year, not, not marital problems, just things uh, kept happening, uh, life-altering things kept happening, and then at the end of that year, I was in a car accident, a really bad one, that set me down in a chair for two months, um, 
and gave me some really hard thinking time. Time to read my Bible. Time to think about things. Um, one of the things that I knew without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord was sitting with me in that car that morning, or I wouldn't be sitting here right now. And he watched over me and kept me safe. There was three people involved in that accident that morning, a drunk on a scooter that initially caused the accident, a young man that had partied all night and was had one of his buddies with him and was you know kind of running late for work. Now, he had just dropped his buddy off, and when we hit head on and my car slammed into the passenger side of his truck, it slung it around into the side of it, he had just dropped that boy off or he wouldn't be here. And we were both seriously hurt. I still have issues from that accident. Um, and that was an eye opener. That truly was an eye opener. Well, you know, I wanted to be close to the Lord and we started trying to go back to church and trying to do what the Lord wanted us to, paying our tithes. Um, our tithes, because both of us were working really good jobs, was way on up there. You know, we was paying our 10%. And then a family in need in that church, um, they wanted to help them get food and do some, do some things for them. There wasn't enough money in the church to help those people. I'm sorry, but I see, I see a problem with that. Um, I don't, I just didn't like it. So we tried going to another one. They were closer to being what a church should be. It was a small church, a little country church. They had a food pantry in their church. They tried to help people in need. Um, so they were closer to what the Lord wanted us to be. What, what I believe the Lord wants us to be. He tells us to put others before ourselves. Him first, others, then yourself. Miss Wendy recently in one of her videos talked about joy. Jesus, others, and yourself. And we should always do that. You know, if you see somebody in need, hurting, we need to try to do all we can to help them. Um, I, that's just the way I feel, and that's what I always try to do. Now, with the Lord, with the Lord's help, he, it's Him. You know, if I have the means to go out and help somebody, it's it's Jesus. He gave me those means, and He's gave me everything that I have: my husband, my children, my home, and I am so grateful to Him for the life He's provided for me. Um. But eventually, we started just studying and reading. And, you know, we actually went to the pastor and the deacons at the church that we was going to at the time and said, look, what you're preaching is not lining up with what I'm reading. And, you know, they just wouldn't hear it. It's like, you know, this is telling me this. And that's not what you're saying. And they really just wouldn't even talk about it. We were kind of shunned, you know. And God was like, okay. You know, now I kind of see his plan. And I don't think he's done by a long shot. But I, I can kind of see what he had in mind for Merle especially. Um. Because some of the stuff he's done over the last four years, five years, has been truly amazing to me. That we have a group of friends now online that are just wonderful and so supportive. And people love the Lord and they want to learn and they want to study. And we have some of the best friends that that we've ever had. And um, I have two friends that I still am really close to, and, you know, maybe 
I'd say five really good friends outside of my online friends that I stay in touch with and talk to. And, you know, the Lord has just blessed. So I, I praise him for it. I praise him for my friends. I praise him for my family. And I, I want everybody to understand that where two or three are gathered, he says he'll be there with you. So, you know, just do the best you can and pray. That, that's all you can do. Um, but yeah, we we had a terrible year that year, and that really made us realize some things. <laughs> In 2017, um, I went through a really tough time. My mom passed away. You know, I then lost my aunt and my grandmother, and now my mom got cancer. Now, these are the three women. Now, my mother-in-law, I have to put her in there because I love my mother-in-law. We're very close. She's like another mom to me. Always has been from the day I met her. Um, and she she's also sick. So y'all say a prayer for Merle's mom. She is really sick and, and needs your prayers. And so does my dad. My dad's sick. But my mom passed away. Uh, my aunt passed away in June of 2017. And my mom passed away in July. And I lost the two women that I was closest to in my life at that time. And it, it was, but the Lord still blessed in that situation. I worked all the time and drove an hour commute both ways, an hour there and an hour back from work. So I was only able to see my mom like every other weekend, go up see her and dad. And he gave me months with her before she passed. Um, they were hard months. But we read our Bible, and we, you know, she'd come on and say, let's go read our, our scriptures today. And she was really sick, and she was going through chemo, and she was weak, but she wanted to read her Bible. She wanted to, you know, know about Jesus. And she looked at me one day and said, I need to make sure I'm saved. She wasn't sure. Now, she was like myself. She'd been in church on and off her whole life. And she wasn't sure she was saved. And I was able to talk to her and assure her and ask her the questions that I needed to. I, Do you believe in Jesus? And she said, yes, I have since I was a little girl. I said, do you believe that he came? God sent his son to the earth to die on the cross for you and me, sinners. And she said, yes, I do. And, and that he died and he rose again. And she said, yes, I do. She said, I always have believed that. And I said, Mom, you're saved. You don't have to worry. And... Three days, three, maybe the fourth day, she passed away. Um, but that time with her, God blessed me, even though she was sick. You know, we read and we talked and we, you know, got to spend precious time together. Um, and that really, that really meant a lot. So, um, I know life can be hard, and, and that was a hard thing to have to go through, um, you know, and sometimes that leaves us doubt when thing, bad things happen to our loved ones, um, and, it, and it's hard. So, just stay close to God. Talk to people. Talk to other Christians. Don't be so highfalutin, messed up that when someone comes to you <coughs> weak, wore down, tired, in doubt, that you 
don't take time to talk to that person. Because a lot of people have a hard time saying anymore, I need your help. Or I need to talk to you. Will you please just sit down and talk to me? So make sure that when somebody says something, that you take the time to check on them and see what's going on. My husband is such a, a blessing to me when he he's forever on Skype, his phone. Um, it doesn't matter if you called him in the middle of the night and you needed to talk to him or you just want to talk about Jesus. He's going to be out talking to you because he, he loves it. Now, this man goes from the time he gets up till the time he goes to bed. He's either doing something for the Lord or he's helping somebody. And it, it, it's just like, you know, sometimes I, I don't know how he does it. But then I stop and think. You know, sometimes he gets tired and he says, pray for me because I'm having a hard time. You know, and, and we need that. And that fellowship that you have with other Christians is so important for that very reason. There's not a friend in Christ, a brother or sister in Christ, that when you say, I need prayers, they're there for you. I love praying for brothers and sisters in Christ. Most of all, we need to pray for the unsaved, uh, friends and family that are not saved because you need Christ in your life. You want to go to heaven. I don't want to see anybody die and go to hell. And and that's where you're going to go. But, but the Lord can save you. Jesus came to save you. You. A sinner. You. He, he don't care. He don't care what you've done. He wants to save you. So... Um, but just remember to stay in your Bible and read and stay close to God. That That's the main point that I want to make after I've said all this is when I look back through my life, I can see exactly where Jesus was with me I, through the whole thing. I can see the pain and problems that I brought on myself because I didn't stay close to him. And he was trying to show me. He he was trying so hard. Look, daughter, come back to me. And I just wasn't listening. So stay close to God and walk with him. Talk to him. Talk to him like he is your friend because he is. And... You know, he'll help you. He'll help you understand. I prayed for understanding. And when we went through hard times, I prayed for strength. Um, and he gave it abundantly. Uh, I didn't think I could make it through some of the stuff that Merle and I went through. But I prayed. I said, Lord, I need, your, I need strength. I need you to help me. And he gave it. Um... But please, if if you guys ever want to talk or have questions, you know, or you're feeling bad about something, message me. I, I pray that this has helped somebody. I'm not a person that really just gets on these videos and stuff and, and says a whole lot. I don't mind getting on, like with Wendy or Merle or, you know, whoever. But as far as getting on here and taking the initiative to do these things myself, nah, it probably won't ever happen. Um, the Lord's laid something on my heart for a few years now, and I, I don't know. I don't have the means to do it at this minute. Um, but, you know, maybe he's going to make a way for that. I, I don't know, but this this thing that I need to do keeps coming into my mind, and I'm like, okay, Lord, I, you know, I don't know what to do. So... I'm praying about that, and um, he'll make a way if, if that's what he wants me to do. But just uh, please, if you ever need anything, uh, don't be afraid to find me on Facebook or 
ask because we need each other. We need prayers and we need help. And don't ever think that a problem that you have is too bad. Uh, people struggle with alcohol. You know, I struggled with alcohol for a little while during my wild periods. And, you know, I promised the Lord, I said, Lord, if you'll just get me home and take care of me, I, I won't ever do any of these things anymore. And, and I didn't. And so far, you know, he has really helped me with that. Um, the desire to go out to bars and things like that, he took away. And I'm glad that he did. So, you guys be blessed. I hope and pray that this helps someone, even if it's just one person. You know, this was for somebody. Somebody needed to hear this because, you know, the Lord's been dealing with me about this video for months. And I didn't really want to do it. But he was like, yeah, come on now. Um, and then he got Merle on the bandwagon to push me to do it a little bit. So I had to. But you guys take care and be blessed in Jesus' name.